You know, recently, I have had something really specific on my mind. Something that I have wanted to make a video about for well over a year now, and something that has been a really big part of my life since I was just a little dude. And that thing is first-person shooter modes. I'm talking about the virtual video game arenas that are built specifically for player-on-player -player bloodshed, strategic gameplay, or just outright mayhem. Now, if you have seen my previous two videos in this series, you would know that I have a little bit of a healthy obsession with virtual spaces and all of the ways that they can really impact a given player. Handcrafted digital worlds meant to be explored, examined, and experienced for years and years to come. But multiplayer maps like these and shared player space in general have always been interesting to me in a very different way. Because when you think about it, many of the more legendary spaces like these, beyond FPS even, can end up being so much more than just a gallery of polygons to run around and waste time in. I mean, some of these locations grow to be legitimately sacred spaces for people. Cathedrals of code, if you will, where millions and millions of players around the world forge core memories with their friends and even make new ones along the way. Now maybe that sounds kind of funny to you, but I feel this is the sort of thing that you either get or you don't. And just my describing the phenomenon probably has several maps popping into your head right now. I mean places that strangely really feel like home. So please comment down below what those are for you. I'm very curious. But anyway, a few weeks ago, I began scanning my personal memory banks for interesting or good or cool multiplayer maps to dive a little deeper into with a video, and many things came up. Of course, how could you not think of D-Dust 2? or Blood Gulch, or Facing Worlds, or Mexican Mission. Oh baby, Mexican Mission. But the one that I just simply couldn't shake, the map that is so thoroughly burned into the back of my brain, and probably yours too if you clicked on this video, is the absolutely legendary Two Fort from Team Fortress 2. Two Fort is possibly the most infamous map from one of the most globally played FPS games of all time. Some might call it a certified hood classic. A map that you likely either love or hate. A mostly symmetrical, simple, and efficiently designed place that has led to millions of collective hours of hilarity. A map that is the very essence of Team Fortress. Two teams, two forts, and one goal. But you see, Two Fort is absolutely one of those ones that has become something so much more. It really is, believe it or not, in a way, a cultural ground zero, a mythical place, a sacred place, a kind of shitty place, a capture the flag map where oftentimes no one captures the flag, a place for sophisticated conversations about the finer things in life, a place of endless suffering and pain where you can simply play TF2 for hours and hours on end, learn the basics, and enjoy the goofiness of one of the best games ever made. But I also find Two Fort to be a fascinating piece of video game history. A map that has roots going way back nearly 30 years and has seen so many different iterations over the decades before it even found its way into TF2. So I really want to dig into this seemingly simple, approachable place. I want to look at the layout, the design, the experience, and the legacy of this map. I mean, why of all of the available options did Two Fort become the default for so many players? Honestly, is this map even any good? What are up with those terrible choke points, and why is everyone playing Sniper all of a sudden? Well, before we continue, you, I want to, as always, thank all of my awesome patrons for supporting this channel away from YouTube.com. It really helps me out a ton. I am Ghost, your host as always, and without further ado, I implore you to kick back, hop on Engineer, and just enjoy the rest of the show. I think we have all heard the phrase, less is more. And I feel like Team Fortress 2, when it was released back in 2007, really fully embodied that philosophy. The art style was so smooth, streamlined, and most importantly, clear. Enemy silhouettes were instantly recognizable as one of the nine player classes, and the weapon loadout for each of those classes felt super balanced and clean. Then you had stuff like the really fun characterizations of each of those classes, and the greater game world which was so intriguing and mysterious. But add on to that, that there were just the right amount of maps to never get too bored. The game was just flat out approachable and fun. Man, those were simpler times, weren't they? But of that initial pool of maps, Two Fort was instantly something special that a huge portion of the player base naturally gravitated towards. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the simplicity and small size alone make it a very refreshing experience, especially today when compared to some of the monstrosities of modern FPS games. But that tighter design, in my humble opinion, really lends itself perfectly 
to jumping in and out for some very quick and very basic gameplay. The symmetry and clarity of this map make it a wonderful choice, especially for new players. Things like the dedicated spawn room being right in the fight so you never feel like you're commuting back into the battle. The multiple levels and layers of movement, the sight lines for the different classes to try to use their unique talents and impact the game. The possibilities of coordinated team efforts to infiltrate the enemy fort while holding down their own, it's all just right there in a little compact package. But whoa now, hold on everybody, because before we get too far into any like design, gameplay, and layout stuff, I really think we owe it to Two Fort to cover the incredible true story of the creation of this map, the real world lore if you will. Because this map, boy, is something of a mystical heirloom, a thing passed down through generations, molded, shaped, and honed into the fine little gemstone it is today by multiple people, game engines, and decades. In fact, Team Fortress itself, and by extension 2 Fort, can trace their origins all the way back to the early 1990s. The era of grey 10-ton monitors, LAN parties, weirdos, and of course, the famous video game known as Doom. Oh man, of course, it's gotta start with Doom, right? The granddaddy of all FPS games. Doom 1 and 2 are just so sick, man and they fundamentally changed the landscape of video games forever. This is of course because they're great games and were very innovative in the realm of PC gaming, but I believe a huge part of their long-term success and influence is due to two things. Number one, Doom being ported to so many different consoles beyond PC, and number two, what we are interested in here today is a little something called WADs. Now maybe you have heard of these before, but .wad files are the custom player-made levels that people around the world have been building at home and sharing over the internet from 1993 or 4 all the way up to today. These have really ranged wildly from levels that just feel like extensions of Doom to total conversion mods to really crazy unique stuff like the My House WAD that is actually literally circulating around the internet this week 30 years after Doom came out, and that's honestly crazy. But way back in the year 1996, just some guy somewhere named Ben Fletcher uploaded a simple little wad he made to DoomWorld.com. An innocent enough creation in a sea of custom levels, it was titled Fortress.Wad. And this, my friends, is the beginning of everything. The premise here was very straightforward. Two teams battle in a tight corridor set of fortresses with the goal of escaping through the secret door in your opponent's base. The forts were each littered with traps and dead ends to trick the enemy team, and a set of long bridges connected the two buildings with a river and then sewer system down below. It was admittedly rather crude, I'd say, but honestly laid out many of the foundational pieces for the concept of two forts. Old Ben Fletcher had no idea at the time, but he accidentally set in motion a series of events that would change the genre forever. Because you see, somewhere along the way, Fortress.wad was downloaded and played by a trio of friends named Robin Walker, John Cook, and Ian Colley, along with a few of their other buddies. And that Fortress Wad, according to Robin, single-handedly inspired this crew to create something entirely new. A team-based cooperative shooter with nine playable unique classes, a game mode structured around, well, these structures. A couple of fortresses, a red team, a blue team, and one goal. So later that year, in the summer of 96, they developed, designed, and released a one-of-a-kind standalone mod in the Quake engine called Team Fortress. Scout, Sniper, Soldier, Demolitions, Medic, Heavy Weapons, Pyromaniac, Spy, Engineer. Those were your options, and the setting, of course, begins and ends with the first real concrete execution of Two Fort. Now remember that this was no official game, of course, but it still found a ton of success online. People around the world were downloading the mod and experiencing the magic of red versus blue for the very first time. And this first ever iteration of Two Fort was primarily designed by John Cook, and boy, it strikes a shocking resemblance, honestly, to the one found in TF2 today. I mean, look at the spacing of the bridge, those little sniper terraces, the interior spaces even. It's pretty wild to me how early on this map found that identity. But of course, this was just the beginning. The original Two Fort then went through several renovations based off feedback from that growing community. From Two Fort to a version known as Two Fort 2-1, 2-3, 4, 5, and eventually an iteration known as Two Fort 5R. And this 5R version was at the time deemed the perfected formula of Two Fort that would be the foundation for the future. I tried pretty hard to track down all the little changes that were made over those updates, but I found little concrete details, so I assume it was just things like altering stairwells, corridors, spacing, you know? Just improving the overall gameplay experience. But right around this time of 5R's development, the original group of Team Fortress guys, known professionally now as TF Software, were approached by none 
none other than Valve, which at the time was enjoying a boom of growth thanks to their first ever game, you may have heard of it, Half-Life. And CEO Gabe Newell was looking to hire them full-time to convert Team Fortress out of the Quake engine and into Valve's now famous Gold Source engine. Team Fortress was about to grow even more. So I mean, of course, TF Software was happily acquired by Valve, and in 1999, Team Fortress Classic was born. A new graphical style, a new engine, and a new set of possibilities for the game, and of course, for 2-4. And here, this version of the map starts to even more closely resemble TF2's. The funky staircase ramps, the spawn area. I mean, once it was under Valve's watch, everything started to come together further, taking this from a fun community mod to a more singular and official experience. But around the early 2000s, even though Valve had gotten their hands on the secret formula, so to speak, the influence of Team Fortress and 2 Fort especially was absolutely everywhere. Versions of the map were popping up all over the damn place, man. Quake 3 Arena, Unreal with an entire mod called Unreal Fortress, Unreal Tournament, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Half-Life 2, Quake 4, and probably a ton of other games all got these fan-made, community-crafted two forts. Because none of this was official stuff, and in many circles it was almost an assumption that someone would make a version of this map for a given game. Two Fort was starting to become a concept, a much bigger thing than just a map from an old Quake mod. And this is just so cool to me, because I think there was and continues to be some just universal appeal about the purity of these components. And it's also so emblematic of how FPS and just video games at large were in the Y2K era. Something like this that was so raw and crude, it just worked for people, you know? No one was too picky, there weren't a ton of mechanics in these games to worry about. Sprinting, player abilities, running up walls, vehicles, all this kind of shit that kind of complicates the genre today just didn't exist yet. And it is really cool to look back at all these different takes, you know, the little changes, the different art styles, skyboxes, and environments that have hosted this concept. It's truly a daisy chain of inspiration and just people at home on their computers building these modes, maps, and mods for the love of the game. This is what video games are all about to me, man. So moving toward Valve's release of TF2, there was this little leak in 03 that highlighted a couple versions of potential 2 Fort designs of the future, which are rather interesting and somewhat incomplete, as well as another mod altogether known as Fortress Forever that has one of the coolest versions of 2 Fort at all time, and finally, a slightly different from launch version of TF2's 2 Fort which was used in the initial trailers and promotional material leading up to 2007. And then, when TF2 was finally complete and ready to ship, we were at last given the perfect version of the map in that now iconic art style. The blue fort, the red fort, the bridge, the sewer, and everything necessary for years of compact fun into the future. But I think you get my point here in this section. Two Fort is the result of decades of collective work, the influence and the opinion of the people. All of these folks who contributed to the pile of design and ideas inadvertently contributed to this, the final product. It's almost as if this is a blueprint, a structural truth of the FPS genre, the most basic form of team-based, quick-paced, smiling face shooting fun with strangers and friends over the internet. So while the history is surely fascinating and I think makes for a great little story, this video right here is all about Team Fortress 2's 2 Fort. So let's really take a look at this bad boy now and get a little bit more mechanical with it. Well, I think it's important to remember that with arena FPS games especially, how much the game mode dictates the map's design. A control points map here is built with, of course, only that in mind, and you couldn't throw a payload objective on that thing and make it work, or vice versa. And when it comes to capture the flag maps, they are typically very much structured around, well, of course, the flags, which are thrown in a base, a building, or safe area of some sort that's then mirrored for both squads. Each team is then given multiple infiltration points to attack the opponent's base, but has to be aware of the very same openings back home on defense. So here on 2 Fort, there is an obvious front door to each building right there in the middle, as well as the open terrace on the top level where snipers are often hanging out, and a lower entrance beneath the bridge in the middle of the map known as the sewer or the tunnel. Those are your three ways in, but here on the bridge, on top of the bridge, down in the water, and these little flat areas just outside of each fort are no man's land, generally places you don't want to be hanging around because you will get clapped in a jiffy boy. But heading now into the main entrance, the forts, as you can see, are extremely cramped. I mean, you are immediately met with this intersection of tight hallways that are sure to be caked with blood in like any given match. From here, making a hard left leads to a set of stairs that links up with that tunnel and the sewers below. 
row. Then the opening on your soft left as well as right lead toward the very same place, being the core of the fort which opens out into a small courtyard with these iconic funky ramps heading up to the second level. And this right here is where many matches on this map are simply hard stuck bloodbaths. A few engineers set up shop properly around here with a little protection and you got yourself an old fashioned stalemate baby. Because up those ramps is your very first entrance into the deepest section of each fort and a very clearly marked sign says that's where the intelligence is. TF2's version of the flag. And man this little courtyard area gives me like legit war flashbacks, especially as someone who plays a lot of scout and thus is tasked with trying to get in there and get that intel and then get out. But thankfully, it is not your only option. Heading up into the second floor, we have that player spawn area, which as I mentioned is kind of right here in the middle, a small room on the side with a hole that leads down into that entry hallway below, access to the sniper terrace, and a second entrance that goes down toward the intelligence. So following that down, you finally have the basement area, a small little loop with a resupply room, and eventually the intelligence room where there, spinning enticingly on the desk, is your opponent's briefcase. But this too is where one engineer can just bring everything to a grinding halt, sitting back comfortably reading a magazine as his turret turns anyone lucky enough to get this far into a puddle of jelly. And honestly, that's it. It's very cramped, very compact, and very much feels 30 years old. But I think you can tell even after just this little tour around 2 Fort that there is a very strong visual identity to this map. I mean, the forts each have a super distinct art style. The red team with this kind of barn thing going on, and then blue with the more industrial pipes and metal aesthetic. Then the background and skybox suggests we are really out here somewhere rural, and there's those intelligence areas with the command center and the world map with pings all over it. Dude, I remember when I was a kid playing this, just thinking like, what the hell is this place, man? There seems to be stories, mysteries, and an entire world here just begging to be explored a bit further. Well, as you likely know, TF2 has no single player campaign or story mode. It is, after all, meant to be a rather classic experience. But Valve, as a company, is so masterful at making games when they want to be. With unique settings and styles, it seems to me they just simply couldn't help themselves, dude. Because there is this layer of undeniably interesting stuff on not just 2 Fort, but every single map in the game. And in the last 16 years that TF2 has been live, very slowly a story, or I guess more of like an in-universe history, History, has been hammered out a bit to contextualize this continuous chromatic conflict we find ourselves participating in. But when it comes to lore and world building in this franchise, it is very, very lighthearted, dude. And it's exclusively found in like comics, promotional videos, or other little odds and ends during seasonal events, you know, stuff like that. And boys, you know me. If there's lore, I'ma sniff it out to the fullest, okay? So I guess then, the story of 2 Fort as a map is really just the story of Team Fortress 2, which in turn is the story of the Man family. So way back in the early fictional 19th century, there lived a guy named Zephaniah Mann, an English fellow with a ton of money in a wildly successful company called Mann and Sons Munitions Concerns, or if you want the short form, Mann Co. Zephaniah and his wife lived very comfortably and eventually had three sons, triplets in fact, Redmond Mann, Blue Tark Mann, and Grey Mann. Grey was a little bit of a freak and ended up being raised by eagles, so that's a story for another day. But Blue Tark and Redmond were totally healthy, normal dudes and grew up learning the ropes of the family business. But the two of them were always hyper competitive with one another, wanting to be seen as the favorite son in their dad's eyes. And once the pair were adults looking to really prove themselves and their business acumen, they convinced old Zephaniah to look outside of England to expand the man munitions empire, and very specifically pointed out vast amounts of cheap acres in the American Southwest. An opportunity for them each to establish a I don't know, maybe a little subdivision of Manco and prove that they themselves deserve to be the sole heir of the man fortune. So after much deliberation and petitioning, their father folded to the idea and invested fully in the area known as the Badlands. After this, the family made the long, laborious journey to the United States, and in the process, man, Zephaniah grew terribly ill and frail. Then to add insult to injury, when they finally arrived on their newly purchased land, they discovered it was literal trash, useless, gravel pits, dust bowls, and desolation. There were no resources here, nothing of use for Manco, and in an instant the company was bordering on collapse. This was understandably enough to throw the elderly and sick Zephaniah at death's doorstep, and in his final will, instead of picking an heir, left exactly 
half of the useless land they had purchased to each of the brothers. He knew that the two were so stubborn and short-sighted that they would fight each other to the very end for full control. And instantly, the war began. The two hired mercenaries to go and claim the land the other brother owned and spawned the entire Team Fortress franchise. Blutark formed the company Front known as Blue, or Builders League United, while Redman founded Red, or Reliable Excavation Demolition. Both had, I guess, no choice but to go into the new family business of gravel mining and poured all of their revenue into the secret war machine, hell-bent on their rival brother's downfall. Red versus Blue, baby. So Two Fort, just as it is representative of the core elements of gameplay of Team Fortress, also perfectly encapsulates this silly little bare-bones narrative. The border of the land the two were left, a small river and a little outpost for each company, both containing sensitive documents to steal and use against the enemy team. Listen, it ain't much, but this little backbone of Two Fort with the Man Brothers I think adds an immeasurable amount of charm and intrigue to not just the map, but the game at large. But alright man, we've covered the real life story, a little design, and in-game lore, but the most important thing here, I think, is the actual gameplay experience, right? I mean, most people don't care much about anything but that. So what's it like then, to play a match of Capture the Intelligence on Two Fort? Well, I'm gonna be very, very honest with you, it's not great. But at the same time, it is magnificent. Let me explain. So Two Fort overall, I would say, is a, an extremely restrictive, small, and in many ways, bad map. It strangles so much player creativity and skill by throwing you into a literal meat grinder no matter where you choose to attack. It's an overcrowded, hectic, cheesy place that is so obviously leagues behind nearly every other option that TF2 has to offer. But first, let me elaborate on what I mean by restrictive. So, the nine player classes available are all rather easy to pick up, but very, very difficult to master. And in my opinion, one of the most rewarding aspects of spending time with this game is seeing all that these classes can do in the right place players' hands. Especially those like Demoman and Soldier with high potential for mobility. I mean, the skill ceiling is pretty damn high in Team Fortress. But that ceiling is significantly lowered here across the board, simply because there's no space and no aspects of the map that necessarily reward creative gameplay or mastery of a given class the way other maps do. For instance, scout players are pretty much forced to try to frantically hop over the bridge, dodge the sniper fire, and get into the intel room while just praying there isn't an engineer already set up in there, and spoiler alert, there is. Or medics have to kind of just stand here, healing snipers, or stick themselves to a heavy or demo and just wait for uber charge so they can do anything without getting headshot instantly. Then there's the spy, which at its best is a smooth operating master of disguise and stealth, tricking the brains of the opponents and picking their spots for the perfect assassination or destruction of enemy assets. But on 2 Fort Baby, you're just gonna hope there isn't a pyro spamming every single fart in the enemy base, and then chaotically slap your sapper on the turrets only to die milliseconds later. Two Fort is just a pressure cooker, and one that eliminates so much of the spacing and finesse of Team Fortress 2, but also one that thrives on the chaotic moment-to-moment -moment bloodbath, both teams pouring out of their respective spawn rooms, totally staggered, bloodthirsty, and irritated before getting killed by each other one by one all over again. Not to mention that the objective is capture the intelligence, yeah, good luck with that, dude. Most games I have played on Two Fort over the years are either one-sided quick romps or week-long epic stalemates, where at a at a certain point, it seems people stop trying to win and just want to space out, hang out, and kill each other. But hold on now, man, because that right there is also why the gameplay experience here can be so damn good and unique and laid back. Because remember that with any virtual space being shared by people over the internet, those people dictate the usage and function of that space. I don't care what the intended 2 Fort experience is, because there has absolutely been this phenomenon for years in my experience on servers running this map where an unspoken agreement is made to just simply chill. Don't try to capture the intelligence too hard, man, it doesn't matter. Just play, goof around, experiment, try a class you don't usually try, get to know some strangers, shit, kill, die, laugh, leave, come back later, bring a friend, leave with a friend, whatever. I think before there was any kind of competitive mode in the game, Two Fort very much felt like the casual lobby, you know? Almost a waiting room, where old and new players alike could kind of just bum around and enjoy themselves, not worried too much about winning or lighting up the scoreboard. But I'm very, very glad that I just mentioned new players, because after a lot of reflection while making this video and jumping into some games again, I think I discovered that at its core, the main function of 2-4, whether it was intentional or not, 
is the way it acts as like an unofficial tutorial for the entire game. A place where sure, you aren't going to see the ceiling of potential skill, but you'll get a basic sampling. A really great YouTuber named German Peter likened the map to a playground, where you can play and learn in a kid-like manner, respawning and charging into certain death all over again, and I really, really deeply identify with that analogy. I mean, I know I am one of the many that learned basically everything starting here. A place of trial and error and the quest to find the classes you really like playing. Because buddy, I'm telling you, if you can have fun here on like heavy, just wait till you get to some of the bigger and better maps. But really, let's rename this thing Tutorial, eh? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Okay, but I bet a hefty amount of you watching had a very similar experience with it. And it's so interesting to me how the things that hold Two Fort back from being a real competitive space are also what gives it its undeniably iconic and chaotic as hell game flow. In many ways, it does not resemble the TF2 experience accurately, but if you just adjust your expectations and relax a little bit, Two Fort can offer some of the most enjoyable and hilarious hours you will spend with the game, period. I promise. You know, something else that I've always found to be an underrated aspect of multiplayer spaces is what they feel like when they are completely empty. Locations designed for hustle and bustle, tomfoolery, or war can certainly strike a different tone when it feels like no one's home, or that the time and place for fun has long since passed you by. And there is absolutely a certain magical hum here on Two Fort. The ambience here has just this painfully nostalgic effect on me. The water, the birds, the open air farm sounds, the droning of the fans and whistling of the wind, the deep, soothing, sleepy rumble of these computer systems in the basement. Just listen. These sounds and the atmosphere that's built combined with the glorious art style of this game, very much inspired by Norman Rockwell, J.C. Leyendecker, and other painters of the early 20th century, it all just comes together to make a place that is honestly unlike any other in the history of video games. Maybe that sounds hyperbolic, but prove me wrong. Two Fort is truly special and singular to me in this way, the way it feels. I want to not only curl up here for an afternoon snooze, but grab a weapon and join in the fight for one of these dumbass brothers. I mean, maybe it's just the sheer number of hours I spent here as a younger dude, but something about the soundscapes and art style will definitely keep bringing me back years and years into the future until the servers are shut down for good. And on that note, boy, I want to, as is tradition in this series, pick my favorite nook here on Two Fort, my prized little spot that I simply like the best for one reason or another. And for me, it's gotta be the intelligence room itself, specifically on the blue side. Something about it, man. It feels miles from the mayhem upstairs. It's so quiet and calm, but with that wartime possibility of an intruder appearing at any moment to steal my prized suitcase, I just love that contrast and the tension. It being a capture the flag map and the way the intel just sits there waiting for some clown to attempt a heist. Additionally, overall, the way that this game uses the simplicity of red versus blue, but bathes everything in your team's light and color, man, for some reason, it really tickles a certain part of my brain. I just love this shit, dude. Also, this little side room with the glow? What's going on in there? I wanna sit in there. Man, Valve, if you are watching this video, please make video games again, man. I don't care if it's Half-Life 3, Team Fortress 3, or something new. The world needs you right now to do more of this right here. Simply excellent. So while Two Fort as an FPS map is an imperfect experience to say the very least, the greater Team Fortress community simply doesn't seem to care. Now maybe that's partly due to a lot of the positive stuff I have highlighted here, but the significance of this map and the impact it has had on the internet at large over the years is absolutely staggering. Now of course, it already had that reputation going into this long-awaited sequel, but even now, after many grander and more finely tuned maps have been added to the game, it remains the crown jewel when it comes to representing Team Fortress 2. I'm talking about like loading screens, trailers, videos, and stuff. Like if there was a big billboard in Times Square selling this game, you already know it would feature this iconic shithouse, okay? And something else very key here to me is honestly, Source Filmmaker. 
Now, if you don't know, Source is the game engine of TF2, as well as the other big Valve games of the mid-2000s, and in 2012, Valve generously released this Filmmaker add-on for players to jump in and make their own scenes or movies with assets from all these games. And I would say of all the thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands, of SFM videos on YouTube, maybe a third of them take place on 2.4, possibly even more. And it is simply because of everything we have said here today. It's instantly recognizable, dreadfully iconic, straightforward, and feels like home for this franchise. I would bet people who have never even played the game have seen this map multiple times, dozens of times. In fact, I guarantee it. And even now, here in 2023, and I promise you moving into the future, 2 Fort is still everywhere, man. Showing up in all sorts of other games as a shout out, as a parody, as a collaboration, or as a fan project bringing this iconic formula to new communities. It's been listed in countless top 10 and top 100 FPS map rankings, has had several crazy fun variants made over the years, inspired the town name of Two Fort, New Mexico within the TF2 lore, and probably so many other things it's influenced that I don't even know about. The crazy part is there are no signs of slowing down. Two Fort really is the gift that just keeps on giving. From Fortress.wad to Robin and TF Software to Team Fortress Classic and eventually to TF2, 2 Fort is undeniably one of the single most legendary video game locations of all time, period. What it lacks in modern gameplay luxury, it more than makes up for with its accessibility, simplicity, introductory qualities, and enduring legacy. It is the very core of the spirit of Team Fortress, representative of all its history as well as its future. An influential map that was built by lovers of the genre, added to and tweaked and toyed with across the years in all sorts of different engines. But ultimately, a map that feels like it belongs to us. An imperfect masterpiece, but a masterpiece nonetheless. Now, I know that people say the game has changed, the hats, the items, the bots, all the updates, and maybe they're right. But take it from me, man. Go boot up TF2 today, dust off your favorite class, and just hop in a classic Capture the Intelligence game on 2.4. I can personally guarantee you, you are in for a good time. Thank you so much guys for watching this video to the end. As usual, it was a ton of fun to write and make this one, really. I love making content that highlights some of the real world stories behind these games and places and characters, so I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. A huge shout out to the patrons one last time, and I will see all of you very, very soon. I love you all, be nice to each other, and until next time, peace.